After Bond Go 3 Web of Shadows, the LEGO Group took a four year long hiatus with the film, during which a truly epic story developed which involved the great spirit Matanui actually dying. But by the end of 2008, it was finally revealed that the great spirit was actually a titanic planet sized robot. No kidding, they actually said it's 40 million feet tall. Then some events happened which I will discuss shortly which pushed the series in a new direction. And before long, a new film was announced. And that's what we're talking about right now, Bionicle The Legend Reborn. Before we get into the plot, I feel like I should mention that while the other movies were produced by Miramax and animated in a studio in Taiwan, this is the only Bionicle movie produced by Universal and animated by a studio in America. The plot opens with the great spirit robot finally awakening, but it gets possessed by the Makuta which expels his spirit and the Kanohi Ignika mask of life onto an alien planet called Baramanga. You may have noticed, I am not steady on my feet yet. Now, Ma'anui is recognizably voiced by Michael Dorn of Star Trek The Next Generation. Now, he does a good job in this role, but tell me this. How come when a series regular does a voice in a toy line aimed for boys, and no one gives a shit about it? Yet, when an actor whose character was only in a few episodes of the same show voices a character in a girl's TV show, and he becomes the symbol of the fandom. As much as it pains me to say, but truly, my uncle was in its dying days. Back when Mask of Light came out in 2003, Bionicle was the hottest thing on the market, everyone loved it. But now, it was 6 years later, in 2009, and while we still love Bionicle, even the biggest fan in the world can say with confidence that the franchise had clearly seen better days. Let's talk about the character designs. Just look at them, they look exactly like the set. The previous movie had the designs modified and the result was kinda weird looking at times, but they look more autonomically realistic. Here, it seems more like an 80 minute long commercial for Bionicle. There's a scene in which Creature appears and it's identical to the set which is a machine based on the very same Creature. This movie has more recognizable voice talent like the great Jim Cummings voicing the washed up Akar or David Leisure from Airplane as Metis, a sort of douchey type of guy who hires Glatorians. Now hopefully having famous voice actors would lift the presence of this movie, which it kinda does, I won't lie. Some of Matanui's earliest scenes show him as kind of a wimp, a little similar to Bakama from Legends of Metronui, but he was a Matoran who became a Toa. This is the fucking great fucking spirit! The same guy who ran an entire world inside his body. The same thing who the island of Matanui is named from for crying out loud. No. Matanui and Akar are joined by a female Glatorian named Kina. Now if you're expecting her to be a serious noble warrior, you'll be mistaken. A lot of fans have drawn a lot of hate to this character as for me personally, I don't know which one is more irritating, Kina, or the obnoxious little scamp Barracks, or the whiny adolescent Gresh. Together, they all remind me of Takua and Jaller from Mask of Light. In this movie, the bad guy isn't the Makuta, but a race of Glatorian called the Skrull, led by Tuma. Now, in the comics, they were an intelligent race led by a competent leader, but in this movie, they're just a bunch of dumb savages led by a simpleton bully. The movie has several cartoony moments which use sound effects from classic cartoons like Looney Tunes or those from Hanna-Barbera, like this scene. <laughs> you may recall Rizilla's review of Web of Shadows when he refused to do this movie because it didn't cover any of the three virtues. I would have to disagree with him big time. While this movie doesn't cover destiny, it certainly covers what unity and duty pretty well. After Matanui defeats Tuma, the real brains of the Skrull is revealed to be Metis, who is also revealed to be the traitor teased so much throughout the film. This leads to an epic battle in which Matanui finally gets Metis and turns him into a snake. Yeah, 
The Kanohi Ainika, which brought back the great spirit to life, could also change organic material into something new. It happens, I guess. But for this one usage, it's corny as hell. In the end, the villages are linked together to reveal a giant robot, similar to the Matanui robot. As it ended up, this was a prototype robot which went on to fight the Matanui robot in the next year, which was the last year of Bionicle. Here in the movie, it's actually kind of a sad ending because it is clearly a cliffhanger to a sequel that will never come. By now, I can openly say that the effects for all the movies are, you guessed it, a mixed bag. But some of them in this movie is really good. Hell, look at this shot right here! Awesome! I have to say that the animation is quite good in this movie as compared to the Miramax films. I really like the fact that there is a lot of detail on the character models. There wasn't any of that in the Miramax movies. However, I am a little weirded out by the teeth. Yeah, they have teeth! Also, all the Agori models are the same. In the Miramax films, there was some variety among the Matoran. Hell, the other sets had more variety among the Agori. I totally agree with Idiot Darts about the DVD itself. It has the worst menus out of all the previous movies. The others had the pleasure of having fully animated menus complete with bountiful special features. Hell, Mask of Light even had a making of feature to go with it. That was awesome. This, on the other hand, is just static, with its sole features being a lame character gallery, a music video, a few toy commercials, how ironic, and a lame short film. Look, while I prefer the seriousness of the Merrimax trilogy over the cartoony attitude of this film, I find some aspects of the Merrimax trilogy like this last line, to be getting pretty redundant. Sure it was nice the first time, but by the third time, it got pretty tiresome. So this movie was, undoubtedly, a breath of fresh air. I have to be honest here, out of all four movies of the Bionicle films, none of them reach my top 100 favorite films. I don't dislike them, I just like a lot of other films better than Legends of Metronui. Only weeks before this movie came out on DVD, I saw the movie 9, which was an interesting film and had one of the same voice actors voicing a similar character to The Legend Reborn. And should I mention earlier that same year, I had seen Akira, and unlike 9 or any of the Bionicle movies, that film changed the way I viewed animation as a whole. But we're talking about Bionicle. So my review is this. While there are some enjoyable factors with this movie, it's the most kid-friendly out of all the Bionicle movies and kind of an anticlimactic ending to the Bionicle movie series. Remember when I said for Mask of Light that it was made mostly for those who have known the franchise for a long while? This is made mostly for those who have known the franchise for a long while but want to put something up to keep their kids quiet while they dress up as a spy from Team Fortress 2 and talk about the history of Bionicle in their basement. In other words, not terrible, but I wouldn't recommend it. I give this movie two and three quarters meet snakes out of five.